Hello and welcome to the Fair Oaks Community Garden. I'm Christy and I will be your tour guide. The Fair Oaks Community Garden is comprised of 84 plots which vary in size but we average about 20 by 20 feet. The garden was established in 1981 within the Fair Oaks Park. The grounds and water are provided by the Fair Oaks Recreation and Park District. This video will hopefully give you an inkling of the large variety of gardening methods used here and show you some of our favorite places in the garden. This community garden is a wonderful example of the benefit of having gardeners from many countries and from many regions within the U.S., all of whom bring their experience and joy of gardening to this little slice of Fair Oaks. Some members bring in ideas they have recently discovered on the internet. Some bring in practical expertise from many years of gardening elsewhere. Some are brand new at gardening and find that gardeners here are generous and patient teachers. With a membership comprised of a wide array of cultures, the garden holds an amazing variety of plants. It is peaceful here with a warm and friendly community spirit. That's what makes this garden such a special place. Hope you enjoy the video and pick up some ideas for your garden. The first stop on our tour is the garden of Simon and Nadia Rizak, tomatoes on twine. The Rizaks found a method for supporting tomatoes with twine by watching a video on YouTube of an American explaining in Russian in Moscow the technique. Twine supported tomatoes allow for more density of plants per linear foot than tomatoes supported by cages. Simon made the clothesline type support and Nadia attached the twine first to the base of the plant then up to the crossbar support. Although the video is in Russian with no subtitles, the method is clearly demonstrated. The next one is an example of repurposing. Sharon, ever on the lookout for things which could be useful in her garden, repurposed some floral stands used for weddings and funerals to support her vining vegetables. Pretty nifty. On we go to the beehives, donated by Bar Schachterman, a skilled beekeeper who specializes in swarm removal his bees have really boosted the pollination success within the garden's vicinity, an area which includes both the community garden and the Fair Oaks Horticultural Center next door. Thanks to Barr, the hives house the calmest variety of bees, but even so, the hives have been placed away from the walking paths in order to allow the bees to do their work with the least amount of human interference possible. The Fair Oaks Community Garden also includes a large area dedicated to growing vegetables which all get donated to the local food closet. Each year since 2009, at least a thousand pounds of produce have been grown and delivered to the Food Distribution Center on San Juan Avenue. That distribution site serves over a thousand people per week. It's very heartwarming to be able to help this way. Next is the Squash Tunnel, located in the food closet growing area. Taking an idea from the internet, this is a squash tunnel in summer and a pea trellis in the winter. It has been a great conversation piece during open house days in the fall when it's really interesting looking with several varieties of squash hanging down inside the archway. Made from three cattle panels, each 50 inches by 16 feet long, and fastened with hose clamps to fence T-posts. Now we come to the garden's dedicated composting area showing bins where, after the harvest, gardeners deposit their pulled out plants. The compost team then chops up the plant material, mixes that with dried leaves, and waters it all gently as it gets put into screened compost baskets. The nitrogen-rich plant material and the carbon source available in the dried leaves, together with oxygen and a bit of water, combine to fire up the hot composting process. The temperature in the compost baskets quickly reaches into the 140 to 150 degree range and unlike with cold composting where the compost pile does not get hot but is left over time to decompose, the hot composting process kills most weeds, seeds, and plant diseases. The compost team turns over the material in the compost baskets frequently so in as little as five weeks the plant material breaks down into great compost. The finished product is shared with gardeners and used in the food closet area to amend the soil. Garden art is fun and can be found all through the Fair Oaks Community Garden. Here are just a few examples. Barr took an odd pyramid-shaped wire cage, flattened it out, set it on edge, and made it into a very interesting trellis. 
Another gardener had some welding help to create the shovel flower out of broken off shovel heads and an old fan. When the wind blows, the fan turns and it's really interesting. Bear Bell painted a lovely strawberry covered board for her garden. She has also painted lovely floral scenes on her clay pots. She's quite the artist. Bella Vista art students created garden themed painted panels which now brighten up the fences. And Jim grows miniature landscapes of flowers creating a Monet-like look for his plot, a real-life work of art. Here we show off the hand-knotted vine support Zenovi made by knotting twine. It takes a bit of practice to make such tidy nets, but it is not too costly and provides great support to vining plants like cucumbers. Heading over by the main entrance, we find the pollinator garden. It is one entire plot landscaped with flowers and shrubs, picked to attract all sorts of pollinating insects and birds. It is lovely and is stocked with a variety of plants with staggered blooming times to keep the pollinators happy throughout the year. Nikolai, a former gardener, expertly laid out the initial insectary garden, including installing the drip irrigation system. Quentin was caretaker next and defined the pathways through the garden. A nice touch. Now Debbie and Matt have adopted it and tend it with care. Debbie crafted bird baths and various kinds of planters and added more bird houses. She often brings in new flowering annuals. Most of the little crafty things in that area are her doing. It has continued to blossom with flowers and art. It's truly a lovely addition to the Fair Oaks Community Garden. Community support for the Fair Oaks Garden has been immensely helpful throughout the years. Here are just a few of the many great things donated, all of which involved generosity of time, effort, and funding. Eagle Scouts built two much-needed tool sheds. They also built a drinking fountain in the Rose Garden, among other projects they've done throughout the garden. The Fair Oaks Rotary donated a tough shed and two raised beds for the food closet area. A big day of service crew painted tool sheds and donated $500 worth of gardening tools in 2018, and in 2019 provided funding for construction of 15 sturdy wooden benches. In 2019, SMUD provided a $5,000 shine grant toward the purchase of three solar-powered theft-deterring security cameras. The Board of Directors of the Fair Oaks Recreation and Park District approved the funding for the balance of the costs. The Park District also put up the posts and install the cameras and maintain them. And most recently, the Bella Vista High School art class painted the mural boards which now grace our fences. And now just a quick side trip. In looking for fun crops to showcase, here is a great, huge artichoke plant. Artichokes often struggle in the Sacramento Valley heat, but this one looks very healthy. Next up is the herb sharing garden. Kathy donated the planter boxes. Jerry donated many, many hours to the making of the deck from composite deck pieces left over from a former gardener, then painted it. Under the herb sharing garden sign is a little mailbox decorated by Arlene, thank you, with Ziploc bags and snippers to make it easy for our gardeners to cut the herbs and take them home. Each year we replenish the herbs and repaint the boxes. Jim tends to the herb garden, watering, weeding, and cutting back as needed. Slate markers and a painter's ink pen give the herb garden a classy touch for easy identification of the various herbs. These are warming tunnels. Althea found these white fabric tunnels online at Amazon. She started her tomatoes at home in January. They were scarcely two weeks old when she brought them over to her plot, stuck them in the cold, cold ground, and put these warming tunnels over them. The tunnels do protect from frost, but more importantly, they act like miniature greenhouses which warm the soil. With the soil warm, the plants really thrived. She checked on them often, raised the sides to water, then recovered them to keep them warm and protected. After the seedlings were several weeks under the tunnels, she moved the plants into rows. I asked her if she brought these ideas over from her native country, Uzbekistan, and she replied, No, I researched them on the internet. She now has the earliest fully developed crop of tomatoes in the entire garden. The food closet team followed her example and used warming tunnels to jumpstart several kinds of plants in raised beds. This part of the tour highlights the challenges of dealing with squirrels who help themselves to meals constantly from the garden's bounty. We've tried chicken wire boxes over strawberries, motion-activated sprinklers, 
This brand, the Enforcer, requires batteries and a hose connection for water. It is effective, but sometimes gets people wet too. And then we've tried bunya bunya tree branches. Some are now strung along the top of one fence to try and protect the sunflowers growing in a flower bed along the fence. Tying those tree branches, which are quite stickery, to the top of the fence did keep the squirrels from running along the top rail. However, the bottom line for the garden is the squirrels just now come inside the fence, climb up the sunflower stalks. Their weight tips them over to the ground where the little rascals can dine more easily on their seeds. Then another experiment is plastic forks stuck in the ground tines up as squirrel pokers. A new idea brought in by Marina and Andre. We sure hope this works. All of these methods are in use with varying degrees of success. The park squirrels are very bold and unafraid of people. They destroy melons, nibble the kernels of corn, and eat many other kinds of fruits and vegetables. So we are always looking for ways to deter them. If you have any ideas, please send them to us at focgcc at yahoo.com. Thank you. Returning to a more positive note, many worms make great soil. Roger, ever bringing innovation to the garden, has embedded worm pots in the middle of his raised beds. Each five gallon bucket has a lid to keep unwanted insects and animals out, and it has screen sides below the level of the soil in the bed. He feeds his worms kitchen scraps from home and garden cuttings from his plot and keeps it moist, creating a perfect environment for worms. The worms come into the bucket, eat, then wiggle back through the screen into the surrounding soil where they deposit their castings, worm poop, then return to the bucket for more food. Check out Roger's beet crop, which has benefited from the excellent fertilization and soil aeration, thanks to the work of his worms. These next pictures show an interesting hillside restoration project done by Arlene, next to a photo of her neighbor's plot before it's been planted. She had a bare slope above her plot too and asked if she could plant there. Check out the difference. No more erosion from rain on Arlene's side. While her area of the slope was planted, the other gardener's portion had not yet been restored when these photos were taken. That side is now being restored as well. Our final tip, which includes a video, shows how to use a broad fork to loosen the soil before planting your garden. This one is made by MeadowCreature.com and is very sturdy. With the soil loosened to a depth of 12 to 16 inches, plants have an easier time growing. This chart demonstrates why loosening the soil in a garden is important. It shows root depths of common garden vegetables. This is a demonstration of the broad fork in use. Chad has already forked the plot lengthwise in the north to south direction and is now going across the plot west to east. Stepping on the bar between the handles utilizes your own weight to make the tines penetrate deeply into the soil. The broad fork we use has 12 inch tines, but they do make them with 14 inch tines as well. You then pull back on the handles to about 45 degrees, which loosens the soil. You take it out, move it back a little bit, and do it again until the entire plot is done and ready for planting. Your vegetables will really appreciate having a lot of root room like this. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for watching. The overflight video is brought to you with permission of the Park District and courtesy of owner-operator Roger Sayer, a gardener and his Mavic Air 2 drone named Drone Boy. Most of the still photography was done by our professional photographer and gardener, Suzanne Hamilton of Right Light Images. She is currently Vice President, Professional Photographers of Sacramento Valley and member, Professional Photographers of California. Notes. The root size chart shown is from the book, How to Grow More Vegetables Than You Ever Thought Possible on Less Land with Less Water Than You Can Imagine by John Givons with a foreword by Alice Waters, 9th edition.